guys, congratulations on your win. You know, talk a little bit about talk a little bit about the flow of the game. You know, you guys got off to maybe a little bit of a slow start. You know, um, you'd had a few days off. You know, uh, what what enabled you to kind of maybe get into a little bit of a groove, especially when you got into the second half? Uh, Coach Kearns just told us we got to stay solid on defense. We were gambling a little too much and just getting out of our principles. And once he told us to get back in our principles, we just locked in and got back focused. Donovan, you um, you were really aggressive uh, going at the rim. Um, you know, clearly you felt like you had some size and strength advantage over the guys guarding you. You know, what, what were you and the coaches talking about when you got opportunities to kind of face up on some guys? Oh, uh, well, our coach always talks about just play to your strengths. I know my strengths. I could use my quickness to just get around defenders. And my teammates just had the confidence in me. So that just helped us out a lot. Kendall, you, um, you, you came off the bench in the first half, started in the second half. You know, for you individually, when it comes to, you know, when you're in the game or when you start, uh, you know, in a game, does it matter to you if you're coming off the bench or, you know, if you start the game? I mean, you know, is the energy kind of the same for you? Uh, yeah, it's all the same. It doesn't matter which one I'm doing. Uh, CJ came out there. He was doing good last game. So we was hoping to trans translate to this game. And you see he was doing big stuff out there. Still had 18 points this game. So it was just next man up. So I just come in and keep the energy up. That's my job. You guys have got, you know, you, you come back to back um, with the game tomorrow. And, you know, that's going to that certainly coach is trying to replicate what's going to be happening during these Sunbelt weekends when you go in and play a Friday, Saturday thing. Um, you know, it, are you getting used to kind of that idea about going back to back? Because it's really unusual to do that, you know, during any season. Even when you guys were in high school, you probably didn't do that all that often. Um, you know, what is it that what is it that you need to kind of get yourself prepared for to get ready for these day to day, you know, back to back kind of games? Oh, uh, I mean, everything about this year is really different. You know, since we came here in July, we've just been working to adjust to everything with COVID and everything. So I think that it's just another thing we'll have to adjust to. And we always talk about just finding a way. So we just got to find a way. Thanks, guys. Yes, sir. All right, Cameron, go ahead. Hey guys, congrats on the win. Uh, first thing I'll say, it uh, seemed like had a little bit of struggles on offense in the first half. And then uh, I remember it was a give and go between, I believe, Mike and Adrian Delphin. Delphin ended up hitting a three. It seemed like they were running a two, three zone at the time. Can y'all talk me through any adjustments coach might have made there to get the offense going, going into the half? Uh, I mean, really, it doesn't matter which defense they're in. We just got to execute our offense. And we were kind of getting out of our principles. And like, like I said, he just told us, get back in our principles because whatever we do is going to be able to – as long as we execute, we're going to be able to score. So, once we got back, we was good. And then, uh, Kendall, you had that big put back in the second half that really opened things up. Can you talk me through that play and the impact it had on the game? Uh, I'll just crash every time, and it came off perfectly, and I was able to put it back. Mm. And uh, can you talk to me about uh, C.J. Huntley, of course, being a freshman and coming out there and really having a great game? Oh, yeah. Uh, CJ, we always – everybody on the team got the same role, and that's to come in and do your job. So him having 18 points is no different from anybody else having 18 points. Him being a freshman is no different. But he's out there working just as hard as everybody, so it's good to see it pay off, and we definitely happy for him. All right. Thank you. You know, hats off to a really well-coached North Carolina Wesleyan team. Uh, they came in here as we anticipated, as they've done in their games against East Carolina – Elon and Coastal, they've played all three of those teams very um, – uh, the first halves have been all very similar. All, all four of us kind of pulled away in the second half. But we uh, – hats off to them for a hard-fought game. I'm glad uh, for our team that we were able to have a positive assist turnover ratio and, uh, and, and get better, get some game reps. Dustin, congrats on the win. Um, you know, kind of take us through. You, you mentioned kind of a, a similar pattern to some of their other games, and I noticed that too. And in, in looking at other box scores, kind of take us through the flow of the game, and and really, I guess, relate it to how you were coaching the team and what you were trying to get out of them. At, you know, maybe some key points. Yeah. Uh, thanks, David. Um, you know. This was a hard game for James Lewis. He, he didn't necessarily do anything wrong. I mean, I, it's just they were playing five perimeter players, and, and he was having a tough time guarding Isaiah Lewis there in the first half. 
um, because Isaiah Lewis is, is, is predominantly a perimeter player. And so it, it presented some interesting things for us. We played five guards a lot of the times. Now, fortunately, with our style, we can do that and, 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 and still, you know, execute. Um, you know, trying to get um, still in a, in, a, in a flow of rotations and, and, and lineups and uh, because – uh, you know, once again, we're, this was our fourth game, but we didn't have exhibitions or scrimmages to, to really – those 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 things are so valuable to get those game experience and, and experiment with some lineups and things. So we're still, you know, figuring some of that stuff out. Um, but overall, pleased with the way our guys responded. I thought in the second half we had some winning plays, some diving on the loose balls, and I've told them that that doesn't matter who our opponent is. But um, I, I thought that – uh, we executed some 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 good things on the stretch. Got to the line twenty eight times. Talk a little bit about your offensive scheme. You know, I, I think you've gone to maybe a, you, you and I discussed this in the preseason. Maybe a little more of a five high kind of a look. Um, you know, when you've got a team like Wesleyan where you do have size advantage that you can take advantage of with longer guys like Kendall. You know, Donovan plays a lot bigger than his height. Correct. Um, you know, how is how is your your kind of modified offense for this season? designed to go get uh, or attack maybe those paint opportunities specifically, you know, when you've got some mismatches. Yeah, sure. Uh, so it's, you know, we, we, we've, you know, kind of morphed into a five out, you know, look this year and we call it paint the great with what you're saying. Like we want to get to the paint and then get a great shot. Um, and I think what it does is it really allows a lot of space for guys to do that. I think that from a defensive standpoint, it really stretches the defense out a lot, especially we've got guys that can put it on the deck. Um, and so I, I thought that really hurt them uh, when, we, when we really started really looking to attack and we got some back cuts and things like that. But, you know, I do, I do like the way the offense is flowing and the way it's, you know, really um, helping some guys. You know, like our offense helps James Lewis. It, it helps James Lewis with the five out. It, tonight was just more of a defense thing for him. Um, it was just really not a lot of people he could guard. Um, but, um, you know, for a guy like Donovan, who's, a, who's, a, who's, a, who's super athletic, plays bigger, like you say, he's a slasher. Like, there's a lot of space uh, for, to, to contain a guy like him and Delph and Donovan and Justin and all my, you know, and Kendall. Like, the, the, I, I certainly feel like it's, uh, improving daily. Last question for me. Um, talk a little bit about Adrian Dell's game. You know, Adrian's always been a guy that has flashed his potential. We certainly know he's an explosive scorer. You know, he, he led the team at Georgia Southern last year. You know, I, I think the thing that, that Adrian's been looking for is consistency from game to game. And he's, he's really been very solid so far this year, very contributing every game, finds ways to make keeping the turnovers down, you know, what are you seeing in his development that's allowing him to be a game-to-game -game contributor like that? Yeah, I agree. Delph has been, he, one, he's been very, he works hard, first of all. He, he, it means a lot to him. And so he's in the gym a lot on his own. He's in the gym with the coaches, getting extra work. He's in the, you know, the other day after Bowling Green loss, he was in the office at 8.30 wanting to watch film. And so that, there, when, you, when you have that type of approach and attitude, you're going to get better especially we pride ourselves on being a developmental program. And so, you know, I think he, I think the, I think the five out offense has helped him even more. Um, last year we were four out. Now we're five. And I think it's created more space for him. Um, and, um, you know, I, I think he get to the free throw line a little bit more um, as he, as he would to tonight. But I think that he's, he's a confidence guy too. And I think that he's playing confident right now too. And he should be. Um, I mean, I, I don't remember how many he had the other night against Bowling Green, but he's been pretty consistent for us this year. Um, and I really think one other thing that's helped him too, he's gotten better defensively. We're starting to put him on better perimeter players. Um, and, and I think that's helped his confidence on the other end. You know, uh, you know, sometimes your defense can help dictate your offense versus your offense dictate your defense. And I think that for him individually, his defense has really um, improved and helped, and I think it's really helping his overall confidence of everything. All right, Cameron, go ahead. Hey, Coach, uh, congrats on the win. Uh, first thing I'll say, so you talk about the different rotation stuff. Can you talk to me about uh, the starting lineup you brought out today and uh, what you were thinking of coming into the game? 
Yeah, you know, the approach I'm taking with our team is every day is an interview. Every day is an interview. Uh, we've got a lot of depth, a lot of guys to play. And so I've told them every day is an interview, every practice interview. I'm, I'm, I think I've started somebody different every game. Um, and that's what it's um, – I mean, that may continue. I mean, like, I just think that that's a good thing. Competition breeds success. And, and I think that every day is an interview. And so um, we could come in here to practice or, or game and, you know, based off today, today was a, you know, and I think that that's the kind of program I want to have where guys are not, you're not necessarily comfortable being a seventh man. You're not comfortable being the starter. It's not good for a guy to be comfortable in his role, quote. None of them have roles, right? Their roles are all to bring good energy, play the right way, and, and make plays for the team. But um, when guys kind of get, quote, settled into certain uh, roles and rotations, that's not healthy either. Yeah, and so I want them to be hungry and humble and come in every single day as today's an interview. And I, I, I might be eighth man today, but I know if I bring it tomorrow, I might start. That's the kind of program I want to have. And in the, on the opposite, I might have started the first three games, but if I don't bring it today and, and raise my level, I might be out. That's when you get good. And so nothing more than that, uh, other than those were the guys that I thought interviewed the best yesterday. You know, going off on that, I really saw in the second half uh, the trio of Adrian, Mike, and Justin really growing chemistry together, passing the ball around on the perimeter, especially when it looked like also at the end of the second half when – I mean, the end of the first half when uh, they brought a little bit of a 2-3 zone and immediately got a three with Adrian. Can you talk to me about them growing together on the perimeter? Sure. Yeah. And in practice every day we switch teams, and, and so they're getting to play with different people. And, and so that was – that's a lineup that – you know, maybe we can experiment with a little bit more. Uh, but I agree with you. I think that, uh, that you know, those guys are – I thought we moved the ball well. You know, I thought we moved the ball well. And we, we really tried to get good to great and paint to great. And I thought we did that. And we got some of those that doesn't mean they have to go in. Like, we got some good looks that just didn't, didn't fall. But, you know, I know C.J. Huntley got several of those off of penetration – you know, to a kick out. But, you know, I certainly thank all Montessi, Forrest, and, and Delph. Um, you know, definitely I agree. Had some had some chemistry role in there. And uh, talking about CJ, running this five-out offense, having a 6'10 guy who goes out there and shoots what I believe was four or seven from three. Can you talk about that impact he has, especially also as you talked about being able to get inside and have some success there? Yeah, and CJ's a guy that we evaluated at a high, out of high school as a perimeter player. He didn't play perimeter in high school. And so this has been a big adjustment for him. And what we've asked him to do has been very difficult. We've asked him to, instead of guarding another, quote, post player his size, we've asked him to guard 6'3", six, 6'4", six, perimeter players. And on the flip side, we've asked him to play on the perimeter using ball screens. He's used to setting them. And so – I think what you're seeing, though, it's really starting to get figured out for him and slow down for him. But it's been a major adjustment for him. But we see that – that's what we see uh, when we evaluated him, that this guy's on the perimeter. And now, you know, you, this, this game probably showed a little bit more of how maybe others can see that too. He's not a post player. He's not a back-to-the-basket guy. Um, and so you're, you're, you're going to continue to see that. But I think in his development, you know, he's, um, it's, he's starting to really figure that side of it out. I think he's also becoming a really good defender using his length. And, and so that, it's exciting for him to have this kind of game because um, it's been such an adjustment for him. It's been completely different for him. And, and, and so th this is a positive step for him. And um, that light kind of flickering, going on and off, on and off, on and off, you know, it's going to eventually just stay on.